how do you get famous guests and then get yourself featured on popular shows? Today, I brought on Mitchell, who I work with, who has been able to get super large guests like Jeff Ross and Harry Mack and all these other successful people to come on our show as well. He's going to go through specific strategies about how we get Noah and yourself on other popular shows that you've been trying to get on. Uh, one thing I'm curious for people watching this or listening on podcasts, wherever that is, leave a comment and tell us what shows you would love to get featured on. Uh, and it'd be interesting there. Because I think a lot of times when you're starting a show or if you want to get featured on Tim Ferriss or Tony Robbins or Joe Rogan, you always think the biggest ones, but they may not be the best to get featured on or to have these collaborations with. And so this is my list of just people I'm personally genuinely interested in, like Adam Richman or Ty Dolla Sign. What are the things or advice do you have around guests that you want to get on if you're or shows you want to do collaborations with my number one thing and the biggest thing is sincerity in this outreach when i look at this list of attainables uh like i know we recently added ty dollar and that gets me excited what i thought of is what's in it for them whiffed that's one of my favorite phrases in terms of what's in it for them so with bill jackson i saw he had a charity event and i said hey why don't you come on my show and i'll promote your charity event and they kind of ignored me not they kind of, they, they did completely. And so I said, well, what if I just donated a lot of money? And so I ended up doing the sumo ride where that's how I met you, Mitchell. We ended up doing 20000 or $30,000 in donations. And then I donated it. And then I said to Bo Jackson's people like, hey, if you guys want to talk, they asked me, they're like, hey, what do you want? And so it was interesting to kind of reverse the equation of saying, instead of, hey, give me, give me, give me, let me just hook you up fat. You know, it's kind of like give first, ask later. And so the, the other thing is, as people are trying to get these larger guests, or if you're trying to get larger collaborations or be featured on larger podcasts, it's also, I like calling it the fire starter approach. And this is something we've talked about a little bit. The fire starter approach is start with some kindling and figure out how to get on small shows and then use that to trade up to larger, bigger logs. So let's say that people, Mitchell, they, they looked at maybe what podcasts they like listening to, what YouTube shows they like watching. And they said, all right, well, I've got my list of guests I want to get on my show, or I figured out where I want to get featured. L let's take a real example of like this Mark Ganey guy. Mark is someone we wanted to have on our show. Uh, so walk us through the exact process that, that you did for this one. So Mark was the founder of Strava, um, an app that, that you and I both use daily. The thought process there was um, if there's ever like a low hanging fruit opportunity to give something, and then like a quick intro slash blurb about me and about you, kind of putting some context into us using the, um, you being an avid cy cyclist and, and actually using the app and loving it. And then um, at the very end, come in with the ask. You did this with Mark. Did you just send one email? All right. What other things, like give me more ways of, of doing it. I think that Jeff Ross, uh, you know, we're both huge fans of. Uh, and we were able to have him come on the show uh, a few months back. Maybe talk a little bit more uh, how you approach that. Um, yeah. So for that one, the I wasn't super familiar with his with his stuff recently when when he was added to the list. And then um, uh, after a little bit of research, I saw that he re somewhat recently started a podcast. And you could kind of tell by on the socials like what's important to people. So I started listening to that podcast. And then um, I think I did a, a, a similar approach of, of leaving a review um, on Apple Podcasts after I, I had listened to some things. And I had started interacting with his, um, I think, tweets and Instagram um, like like posts. And so, um, and then I got to a point where I just DM'd him um, for my own account and just let him know that, uh, gave him a five star, star review and that I was really enjoying the content. And like he replied, like, um, pretty much right away. And so I wasn't like asking for anything um, at that point. So just to highlight this, if you guys can see the dates, I think it's really interesting. The first time you messaged him was November 17th and he messaged and then you, you asked, said, hey, I want to talk to you about being on Noah's show January 12th. That is interesting, man. So what is that? Like basically two months. And I think a lot of us are doing right away. So if you do want someone that you're interested in, at least today, send a thank you. Just tell them how they've impacted you. That's something even with the Jeff Ross show that taught me where whenever I meet a guest now, almost one of the first things I do is say, hey, here's exactly how you've changed my life. Thank you so much for it. One other thing, I don't know if, Mitchell, you did this, but on Twitter or on Instagram or on YouTube, do you look to see how responsive they are to other people? Or do you try to see if they ever respond in comments or they respond to tweets or anything like that? Um, yeah. So like one of the things I like to do on Twitter is like, you know, there's the tweets and there's like the tweets and replies, um, section. 
And so like you could see what type of things that they're engaging with. I think some of the other things that are that are interesting about that, it's hard, it's hard to guarantee that you can get on shows. You can get on a show that no one listens to. You could do that any day of the week. You could start your own show and have just your mom, uh, which is how I started. Uh, the point, though, I would try to make, though, is that you can control how many people you reach out to every week. That's controllable. And so for Adam and for everyone else out there that's saying, hey, I want to get on a certain amount of shows. I have some a worthy message. How often are you contacting people? And so if anything, just try to make it a, a goal of one a day that you're at least reaching out. We have a goal uh, per month of how many collabs can we do and how many you know big guests can we do monthly. But that that's basically just a it's a, an equation for how many people we're going to contact. I think one of the the key things that you did as well with Jeff and a lot of the guests that we're trying to get featured or the places we're trying to get you know collaborations with is you have to notice what's important to them. Right. So you know that Jeff loves dogs. You know that you know Strava cares about the app. You know that he's interested in maybe in his podcast growing. And so, and I think what you do is you really put in the work. And maybe let's talk about Ali Abdal in, in terms of collaboration. This guy's amazing. I'm so uh, fortunate that you you introduced him to my life. Uh, maybe talk about the, the entire process for how we were able to do a collaboration on his show as well. I think this is a key thing. Is that you know my buddy Adam? We were talking about this this week. Uh, he has an email list of twenty thousand people, and I said. You could approach peop- other people who are even larger than you and say, hey, what is your favorite content? I'd love to promote it to my audience, even just a ways of opening up the relationship. You know, some of the shows like Tim Ferriss, uh, Pat Flynn, I was able to actually build those. You know, Tim, I've known for now 13 years, Pat for a good amount of time, but I built those relationships through either helping Tim promote his book right when it was coming out or with Pat, we sponsored his show uh, very early on. And so that was a way of basically just like bringing value and help to them before I'm trying to even ask for anything. And so everyone can think about how do I help some of these people I want to work with before I just immediately uh, ask for something for myself. So I I think you do a really great job of that. And you also don't expect the result right away, uh, which is so important in this, man. And I think you do a great job of that. Maybe let's let's walk through Ali uh, and how you're able to get him. I'm going to I'm going to share the screen to show some of the messages and some of the process that that you wrote down for it. First saw him on YouTube. And then uh, started listening and watching his stuff, and um, and then uh, just really liked it. And so um, I subscribed to his newsletter, and then um, and was just you know consuming his content. And then one of the as we were thinking more and more about collabs, um, I just replied to one of his newsletters. That particular one, um, I think he was talking about doing morning pages and using Rome Research, like both things that I happened to like actually recently start playing around with. And so, um, yeah, that, that's the reply right there. And then after that, so I was mainly just kind of introducing myself and saying like, Oh, I'm into your stuff. And then towards the end, just floating out the idea of like, Hey, um, I work with Noah, we should do a collab sometime. And so it's interesting. I want to just highlight this email. I've been following your stuff for a while. I love the content. So again, same thing as the Mark Ganey with Strava, just flatter them with legitimacy and sincerity. Uh, next up is something that you're doing has changed my life. I think that's really powerful and something to relate to. Uh, and again, it's like, hey, we'd love to maybe collab. I, th- I think what's interesting about how you framed it, you framed it not too passively, but not too like aggressively. You're just like, you kind of floated up the softball. You said, hey, if you want to swing, cool. If not, that's fine too. Uh, and then you kind of, and you literally ended with that. Like, hey, I just want to say, keep it up. So I, I really like how you did that. One thing on YouTube uh, as well is that you can find people's email addresses on their about page. And most times, they ignore it for the most part is what I've noticed or, you know, I kind of just delete them. But there's contact information is Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, email, LinkedIn, snail mail. And I think the point there is that try di- don't spam them, but try different avenues of communication and see if you get any bites when, when you're doing your phishing. And so maybe maybe one of the last things, and Harry Mack is also a famous YouTuber uh, who was able to come on our variety show. And I think, Mitchell, this is something that maybe people should do, even if you're not trying to get on shows now or if you're trying to get collaborations ever. Just literally, if you do once a week, maybe have it on your weekly to-do list, say, every week I'm going to compliment someone that's that's changed my life or compliment someone who's improved my life. And that's it. Even if you're never going to need anything from them, you know, if you're a creator of any sorts from software to videos to music to business information, whatever it is, it's nice to hear that people like your stuff. And I think what Mitchell's really done and he's just naturally great at is he's like, hey, I appreciate you. And and you are a very appreciative person. And so I think with Harry Mack, you did it with, uh, you know, Jeff Ross, you after you checked him out with Ali, you did it. Uh, And I think that really comes across And, and you just plant those seeds. So if something in six months happens, uh, you can respond to them. The other thing I would say is if you are seeing someone you want to work with somehow in the future, if there's something going on with them that you can help at any point in time, do it. 
right? So Harry Mack, for, I, I didn't even, this doesn't, didn't benefit me, but Harry Mack was putting on a show recently and I just donated 25 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's so true to rather than just have this fluff outreach of, Oh, I like your stuff. It's like, just don't even bother with that. If there, there's so many people creating so many different cool things out there. So if you're inspired by any of it, just like let them know, shoot them an email or, or a DM. So if Mitchell, let's say you were starting a show today and it's called like the Mitchell's morning magic mile quadruple M, uh, you know, if you were trying to get guests on your show and you were trying to get, you know, collaborated, like you were trying to, you know, uh, get featured on other podcasts or other YouTube things, how do you think, do you think you'd approach it any differently? Is there anything, especially if you're just getting started, you would think uh, differently about it? Um, so I think like kind of like my general approach to life is to be, is to be a net giver. Right. And so like, like whether I I'm, I'm reaching out to people saying, Oh, I like your stuff or, it's like, you know, if there's an opportunity to help somebody move or whatever it is. And so like, as it relates to finally turning that around and having an ask, if I were to start this, like, you know, my own show, um, ideally I would have planted seeds from reaching out to the people who were inspiring for me. And then I'll feel comfortable with being like, Hey, will you come on the show? Or what's like a simple ask? Like, Hey, can you, um, is there anyone, you know, that might be a good fit for the show? No big deal. If not, but um, just looking to get the ball rolling. So like making it super simple for people to say um, to help out, but also like not like pressuring them to or making them feel forced. No, I love it. One thing that's interesting, I'm just observing and we'll, we'll end it with this because people should go be people should go plant the net giver thing. I love the net giver and planting, you know, positive seeds across the world. So for everyone out there, if you're watching this, just go give someone the compliment of how they change your life. Don't expect shit. And in the future, you know, keep planting seeds, keep helping those people, get them to the point where they want to help you.